Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. In previous class, we discussed the definition of screening, the different types and uses of screening, and then a little bit about the lead time. Today, we shall talk about the different criteria for screening. That means a disease which is to be screened, it must fulfill some criteria. Similarly, only after a test fulfill some criteria, it can be applied as a screening test. So today we shall talk about all these criteria. First one is the criteria for the disease to be screened. So the condition sought should be an important health problem. In general, prevalence should be high because we shall, uh, we shall try to screen a disease that is of important health problem, which is considered to be a public health problem. Because if there is a disease, which is not very much prevalent, which is not very common in the community, which has minimal suffering, which is not very infectious, uh, there is no point wasting time and any kind of uh, manpower, material, etc. So all these resources on screening of such diseases. So all those diseases which are uh, very highly prevalent, which are quite infectious, there is a lot of suffering, maybe death from that. So it is uh, useful that we screen these kinds of diseases. There should be a recognizable latent or early asymptomatic stage. This is important because we know by screening, we try to identify a disease in an apparently healthy person. That means the person does not have any signs symptom. If he has any sign symptom, he will definitely go for the diagnostic test and you can confirm the disease. So if the disease has a recognizable latent or early asymptomatic stage, only then screening test can be applied. The natural history of the disease or condition, including the development from latent to declared disease should be adequately understood. So we must understand how a disease progresses. Only then we can try to detect the disease by screening method during the asymptomatic stage so that we can initiate the management at earliest possible time. And from lead time, we have already got this idea that if we initiate the treatment or management at early stage, maybe some of the permanent damages because of the disease can be avoided. So that is why it is very important that we understand the natural history of the disease that we are screening. There is a test that can detect the disease prior to the onset of signs and symptoms. So of course, there should be some, uh, some diagnostic, not diagnostic rather, but a screening test uh, available which can detect the disease even before the signs and symptoms appear right if there is no test which can detect the disease uh, in the asymptomatic stage of course we cannot screen the disease facilities should be available for confirmation of the disease sometimes screening test tells us that maybe the person is suffering from a disease it cannot confirm all the time so in that case we have to confirm by some kind of confirmatory test that the person is actually suffering from the disease. So such facilities which can confirm the diagnosis should also be there. There is an effective treatment. Now what is the point of screening a, a disease or diagnosing a disease if we cannot do anything about it, right? So effective treatment for the disease which is being screened should be there. That will uh, either cure the uh, disease or maybe minimize the suffering of the person from the disease. There should be an agreed on policy concerning whom to treat as patients because some of the screening test findings or results are based on cutoff values. <clears throat> so let me give you an example. Suppose you are talking about blood pressure estimation. We know that normal blood pressure is when the systolic is less than 120, diastolic is less than 80. On the other hand, hypertension is when the systolic blood pressure is more than 140, diastolic more than 90. 
so there will be some people whose blood pressure will fall in between these two ranges like uh, systolic in between 120 and 140 and diastolic in between 80 and 90 so these people are neither normotensive nor hypertensive so what to do with this kind of people these people are known as what is called prehypertensives <clears throat> so we have to decide whether we want to start medication in them or maybe we have to go for non-pharmacological management like lifestyle modification dietary modification physical exercise etc similarly in case of blood sugar estimation we have diabetic range also we have normal blood sugar for both fasting and postprandial and in between them we have impaired fasting glucose impaired fasting uh, i'm sorry impaired glucose tolerance <clears throat> so ifg and igt and these people are neither uh, diabetic nor do have the blood sugar at the normal level so that is why there should be an agreed on policy some kind of uh, protocol about whether uh, we need to start medication in them or we need to go for some other kind of management maybe we have to wait and watch these people we have to monitor them more frequently about their health status and then decide what to do there is a good evidence that early detection and treatment reduces morbidity and mortality so if by screening we can detect a disease at earlier stage there must be some evidence that detection detecting this disease at earlier stage can actually reduce the suffering from the disease or even death from the disease otherwise what is the point of diagnosing the disease at early stage it will only increase the suffering mental suffering for the person maybe even the cost because of the treatment if detecting the disease at early stage does not improve in terms of morbidity and mortality right the expected benefits like the number of lives saved uh, of early detection must exceed the risk and cost so whatever screening test or diagnostic test we go for there is certain cost the person may need to spend on his own and also there may be certain risk especially for the invasive procedures so this uh, risk and the cost should be outweighed by the uh, benefit from the screening test or the diagnostic test so that is also expected so these are all the criteria that a disease must fulfill before it can be screened next we shall discuss the criteria for screening test first one is the acceptability as the name suggests it should be acceptable to all so the test should be acceptable to the people at whom it is aimed in general tests those are painful discomforting or embarrassing are not likely to be acceptable to the population in mass campaign so suppose uh, we want to screen cervical cancer right so what does uh, a person need to do uh, a woman would come to the uh, campaign mass campaign where the screening test is being done and paravaginal examination is to be done right because we go for the uh, visual inspection with acetic acid or with uh, lugol sardine whatever so this may not be acceptable to the woman uh, if we conduct the screening as mass campaign so that is why acceptability is very important what about repeatability it is also known as reliability or precision or reproducibility so all these words mean the same thing so if you come across the word like precision or reliability it is basically the same as the repeatability the test must give consistent result when repeated more than once on the same individual or material under the same condition so suppose i measure the blood pressure of a person whatever is the record if another person measures the blood pressure of the same person at the same time maybe within a gap of two minutes or five minutes he should also get the same values at least very close to the value that i got right suppose i get 140 by 90 the person may get 142 by 88 or 90 like that he cannot have uh, 160 by 100 uh, in a matter of one minute or two minute gap so that means if multiple observer or investigator conduct 
the same screening test on a, on the same person at the same time uh, the result should come uh, similar right or at least very close to each other so uh, what does repeatability depend on De repeatability depend on the observer variation biological variation errors relating to technical methods we shall discuss repeatability in details later on next one is the validity which is also known as accuracy so to what extent the test accurately measures which it is supposed to measure in simple word we can say if a person is suffering from a disease uh, the screen test should be able to detect the disease in that person validity expresses the ability of a test to separate or distinguish those who have the disease from those who do not have the disease suppose a screening test detects a disease in a person who is actually not suffering from the disease so in that case we can say the screen test is not valid it is not a very accurate or good test screening test for screening the disease on the other hand sometimes what happens uh, a person is actually suffering from a disease but the screening test fails to detect the disease in that even then we can say that the screen test is not valid or it is not very accurate so uh, that is why a screen test should be able to detect a disease in that people who are suffering from the disease also it should not be able to detect disease in those people who are not suffering from the disease the validity has two components like sensitivity and specificity <clears throat> there are sub concepts of true positive true negative false positive false negative sensitivity specificity likelihood ratio all these things will be discussed in a separate video on validity so uh, we we discussed the acceptability repeatability and validity uh, in context of the criteria that a screening test must fulfill so with this we conclude today's session we have discussed different criteria that a screening test and also a disease must fulfill before uh, we can apply the screening test so if you like our video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates with your juniors and with your friends from other colleges we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video